Hey guys, George from Soundtracks here, and today we're going to talk about dynamic digital exhaust and why it's important to you. Now first we're going to talk about the steam locomotive. We're going to play with our dynamic digital exhaust and our steam. Now we've given you videos in the past about how to set it up, but we want to talk about why it's important to you. So first, whenever you're starting a locomotive, the engineer has to open the throttle quite a bit to get the locomotive and or the train behind it getting going a little faster and then he'll ease up on the throttle as he gets to speed. So you can hear that in what's called the passive dynamic digital exhaust and that's adjustments in the throttle. But you can also set up a reactive dynamic digital exhaust and this is watching the load on the motor and this will adjust the sound of the chuff and the intensity based on what the locomotive is doing. So to show this we're going to go ahead and start this locomotive off. We're going to get it running at about speed step 20. So you can kind of hear how that chuff was really heavy to get that train started, but now that it's at speed, you hear that chuff sound back off. Now as I simulate a load, we're going to simulate encountering your grade, we're pulling a heavier train behind it, we're going to put a little resistance on the wheels, you're going to hear that chuff change. Now I'm not doing anything to the throttle. So you can really kind of hear how that changes. Now we're going to drop back down to speed step 10 because if you don't want to rely strictly on the automatic chuff of the dynamic digital exhaust, you can override that. You can simulate the engineer changing the Johnson bar. By moving the Johnson bar back and forth, we can adjust the timing in the pistons up front. Now this uses the F5 to push our Johnson bar forward and the F6 to pull our Johnson bar back. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and push the F5 and note the change in timber and tone of the exhaust chuff. I would do it again. And one more time. And you're kind of hearing how that a chuff becomes more abrupt because the piss, the valve is actually moving less back and forth in the valve timing there. And so that's what you're doing is you're getting a more abrupt chuff. Now the fourth time we go into the F5, you're going to go into full drifting mode. You're going to hear the chuff pull away, and this is where you hear that leaky valve packing and the rod clank. Now to use the to re-engage the chuff, we're going to use the F6. You hear that chuff come back, and now we're going to work our way back through. You kind of hear how that chuff changes. So you can manually override the dynamic digital exhaust by using the 5 and the 6 key. And now we're going to take a look at our diesel locomotives. Now the prime mover will notch up and notch down based on what the locomotive is doing. So if you've got a heavier train or when you encounter a grade, you're actually going to hear that prime mover really notch up and really get into it. Now the passive part of our dynamic digital exhaust on the diesel side of it will have the engineer grab a little bit higher notch to get the locomotive going and then you'll hear the throttle back down back to where it should be. The active part of that or the reactive part of that is now watching the load on the wheels. So let's play around with that a little bit first. So we're going to jump again up to speed step 20. And you can kind of hear how that prime mover got louder as it notches up. Now when we put a little bit of resistance on the wheels, you're going to hear that get a little bit louder as it works its way up and down. And again, what that's doing is it's watching the load on the motor so as you encounter a grade. So one of the things we get asked a lot is how do we adjust the prime mover based on what cars we're carrying and how heavy the cars are? Well, the good news is, is that you can still do that with the Tsunami 2. The F5 is defaulted as the RPM plus and the F6 is the RPM minus. So I can push these buttons and they will override my dynamic digital exhaust processor. So to push that, you hear it notch up and hear it notch up again. And then we'll push the F6, you can hear it notch down. 
And the best part is, I've never once lost control of my locomotive. So now I can bring it to a stop. And as the momentum brings this locomotive to a stop, you'll hear the prime mover drop down. And the dynamic digital exhaust processor will override that and bring it back down to idle as we bring our locomotive to a stop here. So now that we're back in idle, let's say we want to load up the prime mover before we get moving. We can push the F5 button. You'll hear it notch up. And then let's grab some throttle and now we can start moving our locomotive. And as we get going, you'll hear that prime mover notch up again. Again, it's overriding the DDE. Now let's say we're coasting into a depot. One of the features of the Tsunami 2 is the straight to idle feature. So now my locomotive is running at speed step 20 and you can hear it's working kind of hard. So we're going to enable function 19 and we're going to override that prime mover sound down to idle. And I haven't touched the throttle yet, so my locomotive is still moving. But it's overriding the throttle and forcing the prime mover down to idle. So you can now coast your train into your stop or up to your signal or your depot. Then you can still throttle down. Now as evidence it's moving, you can hear the clickety-clack in the background. Now we'll bring it to a stop. And now the locomotive is stopped and now we release function 19 and now when I throttle up you hear the prime mover start notching up again now where our dynamic digital exhaust really shines is in the genset sounds in our Baldwin and others decoders now first let's talk about what the genset is a genset is a diesel engine and a generator combination that produce together produce a horsepower for the locomotive so on this locomotive here you've got three independent gensets each capable of 700 horsepower that gives this locomotive 2100 horsepower capable to be able to pull trains and switch cars around now the way it works is as the engineer needs a little more power the second genset will kick on and as it needs a little bit more the third genset will kick on the idea is that it minimizes the amount of pollution when the diesel engine is sitting idle so as the locomotive needs power, the gensets will kick on and notch up to create up to 2100 horsepower. Now when it's turning off, you'll hear them turn off at random intervals of not use, so that way they shut down and preserve our environment a little better. So let's take a look and see how this works. I'm going to move this locomotive forward at about speed step 4. You're going to hear the first genset start up and kind of notch up a little bit, and then we'll put some resistance on the wheels here. So we'll put a little resistance on the wheel. You'll hear that second gen set kick on. And now we'll put a little bit more pressure on and you'll see the third gen set kick on. And there's the third one. Now as I release, you'll hear the prime movers back down. And then we'll go ahead and bring them to a stop. And then you'll hear the two separate gensets kick off. And there goes one. And there goes the second. So now we're back down to one gen set at idle. Now that we've gone over the dynamic digital exhaust and how it really works for you, I hope you'll implement it on your railroad soon.